Good day, everyone. I was born and raised in Detroit. Growing up there, I saw people like me running things. This is a courtroom, not a circus, so we're gonna calm down. I'm sorry. What I found there was a passion that I didn't know existed. This is the bottom line. I'm excited to free fall into the limitless possibilities with we the people. So many are fearful of the law. They think it's something that works against them. I think you need to begin to accept responsibility for your mistakes. We are the people. Henry Westbrook claims he hired a matchmaker to help find his Mrs. Right, but instead he was set up with women who turned out to be Ms. Wrong. Mia Wang says Mr. Westbrook was way too picky for his dating criteria to be met. All rise. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Lauren Lake presiding. You may be seated. Hello, Your Honor. Hello, thank you, Sean. Good day, everyone. Good day. Hey. This is the case of Westbrook versus Wang. Mr. Westbrook, you are suing Ms. Wang for $1,500 for failed matchmaking services. Is that correct? That's correct. All right, and Ms. Wang, you said you did your job and that Mr. Westbrook's just overly picky. That's correct. So I'll start with you, plaintiff, Mr. Westbrook. So you hired Ms. Wang to be a matchmaker for you? Yes. All right, what prompted you to hire a matchmaker? Well, uh, first of all, Your Honor, um, at my age and at this stage of my life, I'm a CEO of a PR marketing firm in Manhattan, New York. I'm working really hard. I don't really have time to go out and, and date. So I said, well, you know, I'm making a lot of money. I can hire somebody to do this for me. So. I searched Outsource online. Outsource that. Yes. All right. Yes, we have to delegate these things. So I looked online and I found her services online and I said, okay, this is something specifically for high net worth elite individuals, which is, you know, my community. And so I hired Ms. Mia Wang to do this service for me. Uh, we did, drew up a contract. I paid her the sum of $1,500 and she you had did to pay not. that up front? That was yes, ma'am. All right, so you paid the $1,500 up front, and what did you tell Ms. Wang you were looking for? I had to be very specific with my criteria because, honestly, at this stage in my life, I can't play around with this. So I said, listen, I'm gonna pay you this sum of money. I need her to be at least five foot seven. I'm six foot three. Um, also, I need her to be college educated, um, you know, at least a bachelor's degree. Uh, these are very important things to me. I needed her to wanna have children. I wanted her to be under the age of 35. Um, things, things like that, really important. These are like deal breaker things for me. So, Ms. Wang, I wanna come to you. you. How long have you been in business? Five years. You. What, what is your typical uh, clientele like? My clientele, Your Honor, are um, high net worth individuals, um, CEOs, presidents, um, founders of companies. Um, they have to have at least one million dollars net worth, and if they're working, they have to have a half a million dollars income annually. How do you work with people's preferences or their requirements? Um, Your Honor, it's, it's love that we're talking about, so I don't, my service don't guarantee all those check marks, you know, uh, checking all the boxes. This is, you know, two human beings, you know, falling in love and having chemistry. Um, so, so I will take those requirements and criteria and, and jot them down and try to match it as much as I can. And how do you find the young ladies? How do you match them? You, the well, men come to you or do the ladies come to you as well? Um, it's both. Oh, Your great. Honor. Yes. Okay. And I have a really fantastic database because I love meeting people. So you all do? Um, go into, there's a contract, right? That's right. Did anybody bring that contract? I did. I'd like to see that, please. Yes, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you, Sean. You. So, Ms. Wang, when you do the contract, was this the standard contract that you do, or was there anything different about the contract you did with Mr. Westbrook? Um, no, it's a standard contract. Every time I start with a client and we um, discuss, you know, all the criterias, I provide my service. Um, and this particular case, my service was promised to Mr. Westbrook that I would uh, bring him three dates within a month. Within 30 days? That's correct. So three dates. Set up a total of three dates for the client with three different women over the course of one month, 30 days. $1,500 for three dates. Okay, 
I see this here. So let's talk about the dates, Mr. Westbrook. What was your first date like? <laughs> your Honor, it was a fiasco. Oh, really? Uh, to be honest, just in, in all actuality, I'll, I'll give Ms. Ms. Wayne this. The young ladies were beautiful. They were attractive. But out of my list of criteria that I specifically outlined to her, that was the only thing that she got right. Coming up. The moment before we, we went downstairs, she stood up off the, the bar stool at the bar. She was like with shoes on, maybe five foot three. And what's wrong with that? And later. Now, your son ended up getting hurt. I, I had told Mr. Jakubowski, I don't want Daniel on this, just so you know. I went to the store one day, I come back, Daniel's on there, and Rob is coaching him up there. If you'll be in the Los Angeles area and want to bring your case to court, call 1-888-552-6878. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. We're back with a dispute between Henry Westbrook and matchmaker Mia Wang over failed matchmaking services. I don't see the criteria in the contract, though. So is the criteria done in a separate um, piece the, of paper? The criteria was done in our meeting, verbally. She said, I, I work with clients like you all the time, the elite individuals of your high net worth and your high value. I work with you guys all the time. I know what you want. I know what you need. I can get it for you. She guaranteed And you agreed that. to that and signed the contract? I did. Okay, so your first date you said was, was a fiasco. What happened? On the first date, um, I agreed to meet the young lady at a rooftop bar at the top of one of the hotels in Manhattan that I like to frequent. And uh, upon my arrival, she was already there. We shared a lot of smiles, a lot of laughs. We shook hands. We were at the bar having drinks. Just had a really good time, actually. A good vibe was going on. And so as the night went on, I said, well, did you want to maybe go downstairs and maybe walk Times Square, you know, see some of the sights? And she was like, yeah, let's do it. So we went downstairs. And the, the moment before we, we went downstairs, she stood up off the, the bar stool at the bar. She was like with shoes on, maybe five foot three. And what's wrong with that? Um, I just want to clarify that during our meeting with Mr. Westbrook, he did mention all his criterias, but I, I had a thought that he had a lot of criterias. And I did say to him that I will try my very best to meet his cr criteria. There was no promises. All right. So this woman you felt like had some of the other criteria, but she just wasn't that tall. She was perfect. So when she stood up off the bar stool and she was short, Mr. Westbrook, you was done with it. Well, it wasn't so much like that. I'm, I'm, I'm a nice guy, but the whole night I'm thinking I'm paying for this. I paid someone for this service and they didn't meet my criteria. Now, to be honest with you, Your Honor, I'm a, I'm a bachelor in Manhattan. I can go get a date anytime I want to. However, I paid Ms. Wayne specifically for this service with criteria attached to it. All she right. didn't provide that. All right, so tell me what the second date was. Well, what was wrong with the second date? On the second date, just to cut to the chase, the young lady, we, we were sitting at the, um, the coffee house having coffee and you know having a talk and getting to know one another. And um, in the middle of the talk, she explains that she didn't, you know, she barely graduated from high school and she never went to college. And right then, in my mind, I'm like, Am I hearing this correctly? Is this really what I'm hearing? When I specifically told Ms. Wang, she must be college educated. She has to have at least a bachelor's degree, Your Honor. All right, and then what about the third day? What went wrong there? You didn't like her because? I actually was falling in love with her. Oh, on the first date? No. Oh. We went on actually five dates. All right, now we're getting somewhere. This is how, how much attached I got to her. We had a chemistry that I don't normally get with someone. Just to cut to the chase, Your Honor, on the fifth date, we're, we're hugging, I gave her a kiss, I said, do you want me to walk you to your door? Do you want some company? Are you lonely, you know? And so I walked her to the door. And so we embraced each other, we kissed each other. And while I'm standing there embracing, a man walks up to the front door, opens the front door in his boxers. And he was at her house? At her house. And I'm looking at her, she's caught with this situation, and then she runs after me, I'm walking away. She, she runs after me saying, oh, he's just my ex-husband, he just needs a place to stay right now. So, Ms. Wang, did you know anything about this ex-husband? No. 
All right, so we don't know if when she filled out the paperwork for Ms. Wang, whether he was really staying there or not. We don't know if she lied or not, but what we do know is you enjoyed her. There's absolutely no way they could guarantee that a person you're looking for, the person they could match you with, could have every single thing on the criteria. Now, they might get someone, but you still may not like them, because what I can see now is you're gonna find a way to not like somebody. And you're right, you're a successful man. There really should be no reason why you shouldn't be able to find a date. I know a lot of single, successful women in Manhattan. They would love to go out on a date with a nice brother, but they don't wanna go out with a brother who is so picky that he tears apart every opportunity there is. You did not, in this contract you signed, anywhere state that if one of these dates was missing any one of these criteria, that that would not fulfill Ms. Wang's obligation under the contract. Your contract said three dates. You testified against your own interests by saying you met a girl you almost fell in love with. You had a great time on the first date, but she was short. You are basically testifying to the fact that you enjoyed at least two out of the three dates. She does not guarantee you're gonna get married. She doesn't guarantee you're gonna get uh, engaged. And she doesn't guarantee that somebody may not lie. She can't guarantee but that. Stop talking, to... I'm done. Mr. Westbrook, next time you sign a contract, do a matchmaking service, look at the fine print, read it through, and if you want those guarantees, add those in. They were not in this contract. And I will say this, if you really wanna find love, you've gotta put as much effort as you have in getting on my nerves as to getting out of your own way. Cause the only one that's stopping you from having a nice date is you. Cause you don't wore me out. This is my first case of the day. You don't wore me out today, okay? <laughs> I'm ready to go. Uh, your case is dismissed. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. I'm, I'm just glad people are going to see that you're running a scam I business. I run a legitimate business with 95% success rate. You take money and you promise guarantees and you don't, you don't Mr. provide Westbrook, that. Mr. Westbrook, I am sorry that you are just shutting yourself out of, like, love opportunities. Coming up... And it's the adults' responsibility together, collectively, we're part of an HOA to, to, to protect the children. No! It's your job to protect your child. You're the mother. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Wendy Saperstein claims her neighbor is to blame for her son's injuries after he installed an unsafe climbing wall in his yard. Rob Jakubowski says the child trespassed, which is why he was injured. Good day, everyone. Good day. All right, this is the case of Saperstein versus Jakubowski. Ms. Saperstein, you are suing Mr. Jagabowski for $1,370 for your son's medical expenses. Is that correct? That's correct. And Mr. Jagabowski, you say her son was trespassing. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, I'll start with you, ma'am. What happened? Basically, about a year ago, Rob had put a little jungle gym in his front yard, and the children loved it. They were climbing all over it day and night, and he was letting them climb all over it. And uh, I the had children in the neighborhood, the children in the neighborhood, including child. your child. Yes. How old is he? 10, 10. And what's his name? Daniel, Daniel. Yes. Okay. So the kids in the neighborhood, there's like this thing in the front. Did you bring a picture of it? I did actually. Okay. Let me see. Thank you. So it's in the front of his yard and the kids want to play on it. He lets them play on it. Right. And they love oh, it. Okay. So it's kind of like a rock climbing thing. Right. But I mean, look, the, the mat doesn't even cover the whole pavement. You could just and fall it's off on and the break pavement, your head open. Period. You put that there for what? For the neighborhood kids to play on or because you enjoy this kind of rock climbing activity? I do it for uh, a living and also for my enjoyment. And while we were there, kids took interest and I allowed them to have some fun on it as well. Now, your son ended up getting hurt? I, I had told Mr. Jakubowski, I don't want Daniel on this, just so you know. I went to the store one day, I come back, Daniel's on there. And Rob is coaching him up there, like against my wishes. And so for that reason, I'm part of the HOA. I looked up the rules. It said, you know, you can't have garbage in your front yard. So I had him remove it. And then he put it in the backyard. Coming up. You tell me you never asked him. No, because he was in a time of pain. I didn't want to accuse him and raise his stress level. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. 
We're back with the case of Wendy Saperstein, who blames her neighbor Rob Jakubowski for her son's climbing injuries. So you, you complied. You moved your climbing wall to your yard. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. All right, and once you moved it to your yard, is your yard fenced in? It is now. After I put it in there, I put a fence around it with no trespassing signs and a lock on the door. So you lock the door, no trespassing signs, I see the fence, and a lock to make sure they cannot get in. So from that point, you say your son got injured, Ms. Saperstein? How did your son get into Mr. Jagabowski's yard? Well, I don't really know. I just know that he came to me crying and he said that he was climbing on the thing just like he had always been allowed to do in the past when it was in the front yard. And um, he, had, he couldn't move his arm. It was limp and he was covered in bruises and scrapes. And I freaked out like any mother would. Did you ask him what were you doing over in Mr. Jagabowski's yard after I, I told you don't go over there? Well, of course not because he's just a child. And it's the adults' responsibility together, collectively, we're part of an HOA to, to, to protect the children. No, it's your job to protect your child. You're the mother. I don't question my children. I trust them. <laughs> Daniel's a very good boy. I'm gonna leave it alone, because y'all got this new style of parenting. I figure if he falls out of a tree, that's a lesson enough to stay out of his yard. But it still okay. makes the point that he shouldn't have that in there to the, in the first so place. So it's Mr. Jagabowski's fault. Judge Lake's verdict when We the People returns. You're watching We the People with Judge Lauren Lake. Miss Saperstein, you can't, <laughs> you can't come to court and say you want to sue Mr. Jagabowski for your son's injuries, but when I ask you how did he get in the yard, you tell me you never asked him. No, because he was in a time of pain. I didn't want to accuse him and raise his stress levels. All right, I've heard enough. So, in your attempt to be such an accommodating mother, you have left the door open so wide that your child is not thinking about safety first. He's not thinking about, let me make sure I don't do something that can cause myself harm. The fact that probably to this date, he has not been read the riot act because he's over trespassing in somebody's yard probably means he's likely to do it again. And at some point, you're gonna understand that you've got to do what I do every day, lay down the law. Your case has been dismissed, Ms. Saperstein. Judgment for the defendant. Court is adjourned. Judge Lake has ruled in favor of the defendant. The plaintiff's case is dismissed. Keep an eye on your kid. Well, I think you should put it inside where no kids can get to it. I will make a new law. It is inside. Another law rule with the HOA. It's inside the gate. Locked. Please follow me this way. This has been a production of Allen Media Group.